Hey guys, so today I wanted to show you guys just a little programming tip. Um, there's not going to be any hardware today, unfortunately. I'm actually on vacation as I'm recording this, so I only have my mic and my computer, but I wanted to give you guys just, you know, a new video. So what I wanted to talk about today is the idea of multitasking. So on your desktop computers, on modern computers, you often have, you know, uh, I mean, potentially hundreds of programs running at any given time. I mean, you know, while recording this video, you can see I had, you know, a dozen programs running. And your computer's processor, in fundamental terms, is really, it's no different from an Arduino. It can only actually do one thing at a time. But modern computer operating systems are written in such a way that they're able to basically switch between doing things really, really quickly to the point where it all seems like it's juggling and doing things simultaneously. So, and this same concept can be done on an Arduino, believe it or not. So what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is multitasking and how to basically achieve very, very simple multitasking on an Arduino. So right here on the screen, you can see that I have basically laid out a demo program that I often ask my students to write as sort of a challenge early on in programming. And the challenge is make two lights blink simultaneously where one light blinks twice as fast as the other. So, and oftentimes I'll basically give, be given a result that looks something similar to this. It'll, it'll be sort of two blink programs, two of the, the basic blink programs. So they'll have a blink pin one and blink pin two, set them both as outputs, and then they'll write something sort of like this in loop. They'll have digital write blink one high, delay a thousand, blink one low, delay a thousand. And then they'll have blink two high, delay 500, blink two low, delay 500. And so to somebody who's just starting out in programming, this looks like it should do exactly what I asked. Here's one light that's blinking once every second or, or turns on or off once every second. And here's one that does it once every 500 milliseconds. But when they end up uploading this program to their Arduino, what they end up getting is not two lights blinking simultaneously, but rather one light will turn on, wait a second, off, wait a second, and then the other one will turn on, wait half a second, off, wait half a second. So they'll get two lights that are basically going back and forth blinking, but not blinking simultaneously. So, and, and this is sort of a challenge I pose to bring up this concept of multitasking. So let's go over here to this program. It looks a little bit more complicated, but trust me, it's, it's really, it's pretty simple. So again, we have our blink one and blink two pins, again on 13 and 12. But up at the top here, I've included this Metro library. And I'll include a link to this library in the description of the video, or maybe it might even be up on screen right now. And what this library does is it basically, it's a timing library. It, it basically lets us have set timers, just like a, you know, a kitchen timer for when you need to take the chicken out of the oven. This is a very similar, it lets us have a timer so that we can check and see whether something is done, whether it needs to be modified or, or run. So we have our blink pins, and then we have a couple more variables here. We have a blink one state and blink two state, and these are basically going to hold, uh, they're going to keep track of the current state of the light, whether it's on or off. And I'll get into exactly why we need to keep track of that state in a little bit, but it, the basic idea is that we're not going to be focused only on a single item. We're gonna be having two items. We're gonna have two lights blinking. So we need to be able to keep track of when we're blinking one light, what the other light is currently, so that when we come back to it, we can change it to either turn it on or off. So then we create two instances of our Metro library. We create a Blink1 Metro, which is set to a thousand, and this is just like delay, it's in milliseconds, so one second. 
and Blink-2 Metro, which is set to initialize to 500 milliseconds, half a second. Setup is exactly the same. Both Blink-1 and 2 are set as outputs. And then inside Loop, it looks a little bit more complicated, but, I mean, actually looking at Loop, it's practically the same size as this Loop. So inside Loop, we have two if statements. Now you can kind of think of these if statements as separate programs. They're not. Don't, don't take that as me saying that they are, but you can, if you're just starting out, you can kind of think of them as such because what we're doing here is we are saying blink, we're asking if blink1 metro dot check. And what this is asking is if blink1 metro, which this here we've initialized to a thousand, if a thousand milliseconds have passed, then run the code in here. If not, just skip down and check this one. And so this will let us only run code when a certain amount of time has elapsed. So in here, if, if we start out, the light is off, we initialize these to false, and we wait, and we get to a thousand milliseconds have passed since the program started. We then come in here, and we say blink one state, which was false, is equal to not blink one state. And basically what that says is with a Boolean variable, which is a variable that is only either true or false, it can't hold any other value. It's saying if blink one state is equal to false, set it to the opposite, set it to true and vice versa. If it's true, set it to false. So we're gonna say blink one state is equal to not blink one state. So we're going to flip it from false to true in this case. And then we're going to digital write blink pin one. So our first pin here, and we're going to set it to that state. So it started out as false, a second passed, we flipped it to true. And now we're going to set that as what the value of our digital write should be. So we just flipped this light on. And this here does the exact same thing, except it's doing it every 500 milliseconds. It's saying, okay, has 500 milliseconds elapsed since the last time I did something? Or from the beginning, have 500 milliseconds passed since the program started? So we come in and we check, and then we flip blink two state, and we write blink, blink two state out to blink pin. So we turn the LED on or off. And you'll notice that nowhere in this loop is there a delay. And that's because delay, like we have in here, is what we call a blocking function. It basically stops the entire Arduino from doing anything until that amount of time has passed. And you can see why that's a problem. I mean, if, if you know, your desktop computer, when you opened up Firefox, if it stopped everything else on the computer until Firefox was shut off, that would be effectively like this program here. It just, it would stop. You wouldn't be able to run anything else. So in here, we don't have any delays. We don't have anything blocking anything else from running. So we we're just checking against different timers. So every second, this timer triggers and we will flip the LED. And every half a second, this timer will trigger and it will flip its LED. So they're never stepping on each other and causing the problem that we had in here where the first light has to blink before the second light can blink. They can basically run simultaneously. Now, they're not really running simultaneously because, again, you know, programs can, or computers can only actually do one thing at any given time, but your Arduino is running at least at a minimum of at 8 megahertz or most likely 16 or higher megahertz, so it's able to do things at 16 million times per second way faster than you or I could ever imagine seeing things happen. So to us, this will look like it's blinking two lights simultaneously. And this can be applied to a whole host of other things. You can have, you know, a function that checks an if statement that checks sensors and an if statement that modifies the outputs. Or you could have 
10 different lights blinking based on 10, 10 different sensors or, you know, you, I mean, you can just imagine what you can do with this. So, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys. It's a great little tip. It's, you know, it, it, it basically broadens your ability to do a lot of different things on an Arduino, which previously using this linear model here would have been very difficult. So that's all guys. If you like this video, definitely go check out some of my other videos and subscribe to the channel. And hey guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.